Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Hive 2, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at some of the hidden or kind of secret features in Hive that aren't really apparent. They are in the manual, but they're not really in front of our screen that we can always see them. So basically, this is one patch here with some drums behind it. and then just a patch by itself. <laughs> okay, and then let's remove the ARP so we can just hear how it sounds like that without the ARP. Now, the whole point of making this patch with this features is kind of to make this a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, a little bit larger than life, right? So basically what are we looking at here? So. Let's go to an init preset and it's kind of build this, how this is so far, right? So we have this wavetable here, which is a really nice sawtooth, right? So for example, if we go to sawtooth and then we go down here to wavetable, let's go to our wavetable, click here to browse. And then I believe it's in our additive, right? Where are we? Maybe it is not, where was this thing? Is it in complex? Let me look and see where this thing was again. It's in simple, good Lord, it's in simple. That's, a, that's the worst thing. Okay, it's the simplest one. Okay, so we're in simple here, and then it's on the sixth wave. So we have the saw wave, which is actually really nice. Okay, so we have some unison at four. Our detune's a little bit up. We're not going to do exactly right. So I'm kind of close to that. And we are we are using the normal engine, nothing too crazy. A little bit of mod envelope on our cutoff. Cutoff's maybe, what, 99. Just something kind of like that. We're also bringing the sub in here. Here with some crazy effects, but this is where it kind of gets cool, right? So if we look here in our matrix, the first thing that we're doing is going using the LFO and using the filter one spread, which is really cool. So our first LFO is going to be one over one. So let's go ahead and change that to one over one. And what we need to do here is we get our LFO and we're going to bring this over to the cutoff. We're going to make this map. So Generally, this is kind of how we would do stuff with an LFO, right? We'll give it some depth, but what we can actually do if we click on or right click on this menu here and we go up to our filter, right? We see a lot of the stuff that we're familiar with, right? A lot of things that we know, like the input gain, the cutoff, resonance, kind of this familiar stuff, right? But if we scroll down here, we see something called spread, which is actually very interesting. So take a listen once we give it some depth. So that filter is kind of modulating between our left and right channels. And if we increase the speed a little bit here. And if we just double click this back to default. And then give us some depth. So that's one way to kind of add a lot of depth, which is really, really cool. And then one of the next things is actually really fun here as well. If you we go down to our effects here, one of the first things we're going to be adding here is going to be delay. So let's go to our effects and then let's add some delay. So where are you down here at the bottom? Okay, so some of the settings here, so I brought up the mix to make it a little bit more apparent, brought down the diffuse a little bit because we don't really want these diffuse too much and a little bit extra feedback. And that's kind of really what we need to do for now. Okay, so here we can right click this here. So we're gonna go to the uh, the delay, right? So if we're looking here on our list and we see delay here at the bottom and then right over here, we see this thing called pan. We also have wow, which is really cool. That's something you should be familiar with from Diva. We also have that in high, but it's gonna be in this category. But take a look at this pan here. So if we click this pan and then what we wanna do is here I have alternate or not alternate up, modulate this with LFO2 on this delay. So LFO2, what's this guy doing? We're doing a random hold at one over one. So meaning let's go to random hold. Where are you random hold? And then we're doing one over one. So we can click this here and then we're going to be using LFO2, right? So map this to LFO2 and let's take a listen once we give it some depth. So our delays are never going to be exactly at the same spot every single time, right? This value of this LFO is kind of moving that around and it's moving the panning of that delay pretty, pretty hard.
So for the first thing here, we're using that filter spread to kind of use the the uh, the filter cutoff to kind of move things left and right. And then we're adding on to that with a delay and kind of moving this around with a random hold. I mean, you can always switch out the different uh, the different LFO shapes for that, but we're kind of just randomly placing delays all over the stereo field. And then we can add on that as well. If we, for example, do this trick I love doing on Hive, right? And I kind of set up in other synthesizers if I can, but if we take alternate, right? And we match this to the oscillator one pan. So let's grab alternate and we go to the pan. So every time we hit a note, it's going to alternate between the left and the right speakers because we're, you know, we're modulating the pan. Which is really cool. We're kind of taking more advantage of that stereo space. And then as well, what we can do if we look over back here again, I believe that's all we have. Okay, so we're doing kind of the same thing here with the reverb as well. I don't think that's in the, I think that's in the manual, but it's not really like an obvious choice, right? Because if we look at our reverb, we don't really have a panning knob here, right? So since we're gonna be using the same modulation source as LFO2 for the delay, we can also use that for the reverb. So now our reverb's activated, we can go here and do the panning as well, which is kind of nice. So we can click this guy and then give this also some depth. So the same thing where the delays are kind of happening everywhere, I guess, in the stereo field, the reverb's gonna do that same thing. So with just a couple different modulations, we can really build something up pretty big, and we add some distortion on this guy as well to make it a little bit more nasty. we have some chorus as well and we're going on classic nothing too crazy most of these are going to be default except we're going to bring down that wet a little bit and our delay is happening before our reverb so we have that there and then our compressor here at the end Definitely a big patch in just using what <laughs> in one oscillator sub and these kind of cool little things to move things around. And then if we kind of like how we did in the beginning, we can turn on our ARP, something like this, or maybe on two. So yeah, that's just a couple of the cool stuff that's in Hive that's really not in front of our screen every single time. And you can do a lot of cool stuff with that though. Namely, this filter spread is really cool. So try that as well on pads. I think it's really cool because you can really get things moving over time slowly if you're kind of moving the filter cutoff throughout the left and the right speaker, which is really fun to do. So yeah, that was some of these cool features. Hopefully you uh, are a little bit smarter now and implement these into your Hive patches. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.